Hey guys, we're going to kind of wrap up these constant velocity notes today. We've got two more pages to do, seven and eight. So we're going to do constant velocity note package, page seven and eight. Are you getting pretty good at taking notes this way? You know, in a traditional class, I'd be kind of lecturing, but this is kind of a blended class, so I'm trying to do everything kind of on movies, etc. So let's go to seven and eight. I want to kind of show you something new here. And so again, we're talking about objects moving at one velocity. We uh, talked about position time graphs being diagonal, and we can compare different runners or, or different objects, can answer some questions, come up with equations. It's all good stuff here. Sometimes our position, position time graphs you know, have a negative slope or negative velocity. Sometimes we have objects at rest. So let's just kind of scroll here to page seven. I want to introduce maybe a new type of graph. It's called the velocity time graph. And I always like to say these are called VT graphs. VT me please. So um, here we have this object you know, we had this object going from zero up to 250 miles in five hours. You know, we said the slope there, if we could get the slope, again, we've got five comma 250 and zero, zero. Our slope then would be 50 miles per hour. Well, that's one slope, one velocity for this object. So what we can do is we can convert this graph really, this slope, so the slope here, the slope here then helps us form the line that we get here. So this object is moving at 50 miles per hour. That's its velocity. So the slope or the diagonal here becomes a horizontal line here. So for five, so for five hours, this object is going 50 miles per hour. Now, we can do something kind of interesting here with this graph. What we can do is we can hatch out this area. And the area of the graph then, or the area of this is a rectangle, right? Well, so we get then a shape here, a rectangle. Well, the area of the rectangle is base times the height, right? But this base is really a time idea and the height really represents a velocity, right? So all we really need to do is multiply the velocity times time or the time times velocity. And look what we get here. Five times 50. That's five hours times 50 miles per hour. Well, the hours then cancel and we're left really with miles. So that's 250 miles. But isn't that exactly what we knew that the car had traveled? So this area really represents then the displacement the displacement of the object. Okay, let's try the next one here. So let's kind of come up with the slope 4, 0. This would be 0, 5. So the car moves five meters in four seconds, but the car is moving back to the reference point, so that would be negative 1.25 meters per second. So we can show this graph as a horizontal line. We want to just go up to four here because that's all we know about here. Okay. Again, we can hatch that area out and we get then the displacement is the area. That's the base times the height. So that's negative 1.25 meters per second times four seconds. Okay, so the displacement then, negative 1.25 times four seconds, and we're left then with negative five. Well, the object ended up xf minus xi, the object ended up at zero. Okay, the object ended up at zero. 
but the object started at 5. So we set xf minus xi is displacement, but that's just equal then to the area we got. So again, the area is the displacement. It's where did the object end minus where the object started. Okay, now with this, uh, with this graph, you know, with this graph, we really have to, um, well, let's, let's make the velocity time graph, okay? So if we drop this down here, we have 2.5 comma 3, and we have 0, 0. Okay, so let's come up with the slope here. So 3 divided by 2.5, so that's 1.2. So that's a slope of 1.2. So for the first two and a half seconds, for the first two and a half seconds, I'm traveling at a speed of 1.2 meters per second. Then, look, what does it mean to have this horizontal line here? What did the object do? Well, the object stopped at three meters. So. How we show that then is we can draw then a, a vertical line down because now we have no more velocity. Does that idea make sense? We had velocity for two and a half seconds. Then we have no velocity for the remaining two and a half seconds. So we have one little rectangle here and then we don't have any more area there. That means we're not going any more displacement. So again, we would write 1.2 that would be the base times the height times 2.5. Okay, that's equal to three meters. That's my displacement for the first two and a half seconds. Then this area equals zero, right? There's no height, it's just a line on the axis. So that means I don't go any additional distance. Now, how might we do something like this? Well, we have a slope here so here's this point, 2 comma 3, and I'm at 0, 0. So the slope here is 1.5. Then I have a slope here of 0, right? Because I'm not traveling any further, any further for a second. And then I go 3 meters in 2 additional seconds, so my slope here is a negative 1.5. Okay? Now let me get to a different color here. I feel like we've been using orange a lot here. So what we've got then is 1.5 for two seconds, okay? Then we're not moving any additional velocity for one second, so we come down here and make a horizontal line. Then we have negative 1.5 for two additional seconds. Now, let's check the area. Okay. Okay, we have now two boxes here, right? So we can get the area of this. Okay, that's again equal to displacement. Is this getting on the video okay? Let me scooch it over a little bit. Well, that's gonna be then 1.5 times two that's three meters, okay, 1.5 meters per second times two seconds. Well, then this area is zero because I'm resting. I'm not going any further. And then we have negative 1.5 times two is a negative three. So I have three plus zero minus three, so I add up these areas, well, I get zero. Well, is that exactly right? Well, I started at my reference point, I go three meters, then I come three meters back to my reference point. So my xf minus xi equals to three minus three, or zero. Again, that's my displacement. But that equals to, that equals to kind of what I found when I added up all the areas, okay? so. Velocity time graphs, they show velocity. We take slopes here, we get horizontals here. We get horizontals. 
we can then take areas to find the displacement. Now it's important for you to remember you're not finding distance, you're finding displacement here when you take the area. See if you go back to this graph, the distance is how far did you walk or run this? Well, you go six meters. But you go out and then come back. So you're coming back to the reference point. So your displacement zero. But your dis your displacement zero, but your distance is not. Okay, now we've got to tackle the next page and then we'll be kind of done with our notes. Okay? So the key thing we want to talk about is how can we take then a velocity time graph? If you're given this VT graph, how can we make then a position time graph? And then we can answer some questions here. So for the first 20 seconds here, so this this is this basically is time in seconds. Okay, I'm gonna scooch you my camera just a little bit. This is time in seconds. So what I can do is create a little box here. I can get the area. Okay, that's equal to displacement. Or how far did I travel away from my reference point? Well, that's one meter per second times 20 seconds. Or that's 20 meters. Okay, so if I come down to this graph, in the first 20 seconds, I go 20 meters. So I'm going to have, have then 20 comma 20. Okay. Okay, that'll make a diagonal there because I'm going constant. Then at 20 seconds, my velocity now is 3. And for 10, 20, 30 seconds here, so for 30 seconds, I'm going to go 3 meters per second times 30. Well, that's going to give me 90 additional meters. Okay, does that make sense? I'm going 90 more. Well, I'm at 20, so I must, in 10, 20, 30 seconds, I end then at 110, right here. So this would be then 50, comma, 110. All right, now, I thought I might have a ruler here, but I've got a meter stick, which will just work. So again, we want to make a diagonal here. But this diagonal is going to have a bigger slope, right? Because I'm going faster. Then look at the next interval here for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 seconds. So this is 40 more seconds. Okay, 40 more seconds here. Look, my slope is zero meters per second. So I have no area. That means I must be resting, right? Or I'm stopped. Well, but the thing of it is, I'm at 110 meters. So I'm going to remain at 110 meters for 40 seconds. Okay, so 10, 20, 30, 40. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be then at 90, comma, 110. And again, I can kind of make a line here. Or if you have a ruler, you can do that. All right, does that make sense? We're resting. Okay, this becomes in a horizontal line on a position time graph. Okay, well, look what happens here then. I'm now going 7 meters per second. I'm now going 7 meters per second for 10, 20, 30 seconds. So I can multiply that by 30 seconds. Again, that's area. And I get 210 meters. Okay? But I'm at 110. So I need to add 110 to 210. And I get 320, right? Does that make sense? So 10, 20, 30. So by the end of 30, 30 additional seconds, or 120 seconds, I'm now a little bit off this graph, right? I'm at 120, comma, 320. So again, I should use a, meet, a ruler, okay? That's a pretty steep slope, because I'm going seven meters per second. Now, look at what happens here then. I now have a negative velocity negative velocity of 5 meters per second. Okay? But I do that for 10, 20, 30 seconds. So I find the area. 
Well, that's a negative 150. So I'm at 320, but I'm going 150 meters back to my reference point or back towards my reference point. So I would take on your calculator, you can take 320 and then minus 150. You get 170. So that's going to be a point here, right? So 150 comma 170. And then again, we can link that up to a diagonal. Okay, so this would be a slope here. This would be a slope here of 1 meter per second. This is a slope here of 3 point or 3 meters per second. This is a slope here of 0. This is a slope of 7 meters per second. And here I'm going back towards my reference point. I have a slope of negative 5 meters per second. Okay, so now we can maybe answer some questions that we have kind of at the bottom of the page. How far did the object go during each interval? Well, we've got that information here. It goes 20 meters. Then it goes an additional 90 to make for that 110. So then it goes 90 meters. Then we go zero meters. Then we go an additional then 210 meters. And finally then we come back 150 meters. Okay, does that make sense? So we get then this, we get then this from the areas, right? Areas help us here. Because areas tell us displacement. What direction did the object go during each interval? Well, it went away from the reference point and then away from the reference point even more. Then it stopped. Then it went away from the reference point and then we're coming back towards our reference point. Did the object make it back to the reference point? No. The object still has 170 meters to go. So what's the overall displacement for the entire trip? Well, that'd be XF minus XI, right? My XF, then I ended up at 170. I started then at zero. So my overall displacement for the entire trip is 170 meters. What's the entire, what's the distance? So if I was tabulating how far I walked, you know, I ended up 320 meters plus I walked an additional 150 meters. So this 150 meters to get a distance, I just want to call that positive, add it to how far I walked here. So I get three, four, what, 470 meters total. So my distance, my distance is 470 meters. Okay, does that idea make sense? Now, what's the average velocity? Well, remember, velocity is displacement over time. Well, my displacement's 170. I divide that, that's in meters. I divide that then by 150 seconds. 170 divided by 150. Do that on your calculator. You get 1.13 meters per second. What's my speed? Well, speed is distance over time. Well, the distance was 470, okay, and I did that 470 over 150. So I can divide 470 divide by 150 and I get 3.13. Okay, now does that idea make sense? We're taking a velocity time graph here we're using areas here to construct a position time graph. So these boxes or areas we have here, these rectangles, become then diagonal lines. Okay, the steeper the slope of, the di of the, these diagonal lines, the faster this object is going. Okay, well that's about it for this unit here. All right? Hey, we'll talk to you later. Bye.